want to show you how to analyze and report on archived preventive maintenance. Okay, so I'm going to go into the green background oil can, PM analysis. And when I click on that, I get a listing of all uncompleted PMs. Okay, well that's not what I want at the moment, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this display drop-down and I'm going to pick all completed. Okay, so from here I can limit the date range, which is what you probably want to do. Um, I'm working with some really old data, but it gives me a large data set to work with. Uh, this is actually about probably 20 years worth of data in here in the sample database. Okay, so what I can do with this, I can filter this further by using some of these filters here. Okay, in this case, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to import all this over to the OLAP tool, or the Report Builder, as it's now called. Report Designer. I can access it from the Options menu. And this is going to be available from every screen in the program uh, where it could be possibly useful, which is pretty much every screen in the program. And it will usually be found under the View menu item, but if there's no View menu item, then it would be under the Options menu. Additionally, under your Analysis screens, which are your green background buttons, you'll have this Cube button down here at the bottom, and this will also activate the Report Designer. Okay, so what happens when I open the Report Designer, it actually links to the data that I have on the background in that data grid. So let me make this larger. And so what we can do from here is we can just start dragging and dropping fields. So I'm going to take the Equipment field, and I'm going to take the hours, and this is going to give me what? A sum, it says right here. So this is the total amount of hours spent on this equipment. All right, it's not really saying why or what the task was, but we can pull the task down, and we can get that as well. So essentially, you just drag and drop the fields and get it set up however you want. Now, I'm kind of limited in my screen size here for this video. I kind of shrunk the screen down. But we could also take our technician and move, move it to the columns field here, and then we could see what each technician has done and the amount of time they've spent. Okay, So at the bottom of this, this is a pretty busy chart, but at the bottom of this you have the sum of hours by technician, and then you also have it by the equipment. Okay, now we can modify this. We may want to look at this a little differently. So I can go to the field settings. I right clicked on the hours, pick field settings, and maybe I'd rather format this with two decimal places. Okay, so I've done that. Additionally, maybe I would like to see how many days late we've been running. Um, and the sum of days late probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And again, this data is pretty old, so there's a lot of old data in here. Obviously, in a live situation, you wouldn't be running PMs 817 days late. But there may be some late, and if you want to track those, you can go ahead and drag your days late down here. In this case, I'm going to right-click on it, and I think what makes more sense would be to get the average days late. So I'll go to the subtotals menu here, or tab rather, and I'll pick average. And then I think since it's an average, I'll also format this with two decimal places. And if I want to make these stand out, I can say, well, you know, wherever there's a value, say, above 10, color it so it'll stand out. And that will hold those out and make them obvious to the end user. Okay, so there we go. So now what we have is the average days late and the sum of hours. And this, all this data here is also building a chart in the background. Now, of course, this chart's very busy because I have so much data in here. Um, also, since I have the screen squished down like this, it's kind of hard to look at. But we could take this data and right click on it and say export and we could export 
this entire data set over to Excel. Okay. And so from here, of course, we can use Excel's charting capability. And I'm looking at this and I'm wondering now why didn't my field settings with the flagging of high value show up? Okay, it's because I didn't pick this field. So I should have picked this absolute. I picked a value, but I didn't pick the what to do with the value. Okay, so at this point we should have these flagged. And of course we have a lot because again, this is very old data. In fact, it flagged just about everything. Okay, so suppose we have all this data and in, in, in our underlying data set, let me drag this aside for a moment. We went in, we got captured like, I don't know, 20 or 30 years of the data. And that's, of course, a lot more than we really need for this. Uh, maybe we're just looking at the past couple of years, or in, in most cases, it'd probably be in a live situation more like the past week or month or something to that effect. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, we have all the data available to us, but let's do this. Let's pick the date completed and bring it down here to a filter. Now notice when I bring it into the filters field, it doesn't show up in our grid. If I brought it down here, then it would. And that's not what I want. But what I want to do here is just filter what we end up with in here. So let me go ahead and go back to my field settings. And I could go through and check these, but that would be pretty cumbersome. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my date time filter. And I'm going to say, well between the dates of say 1 slash 1 um, 2018 again I'm not sure what data I have in here and let's say 8 slash 1 2020 I say okay okay well that limited the data set substantially we've got a lot less in here now and it may show up a little easier on the chart here but it's still a bit busy just because our chart is squished down here. I can stretch it, make it a little more meaningful. Okay, so you can see this this capability of the report designer is virtually unlimited. And this is available on every screen in the program. So you can take advantage of it pretty much everywhere. Um, you can make the data set whatever you want. I just dragged fields around. If I drag down my date filter, of course, then all of a sudden I'm going to have dates showing up in here. And the, these do correspond to my filter. The filter holds even though I've moved it. Okay, so once you have this, again, what you can do is you can export it to Excel. Probably the easiest way is to right-click off of a value field. And the ones that have numbers in them are value fields. So if I right-click off of a value field, I can go ahead and export this to Excel. And if I right click on a value field, I get the underlying data that created what? In this case, the average days late. So it's going to show you all the records that were used to generate that subtotal, in this case, average days late. Okay, finally, um, there are options. You can save this as a PDF. You can email it, print it, and so on. You can also save this scenario. So if I go to the save, notice I can save it as a OLAPX file. If I do that, I'll just call it PMs. If I do that, what's going to happen is I can come back here tomorrow or the next day or whatever and open this back up. I'm not having to recreate it every single time. Not that it's really that much trouble to create it in the first place, but that might save you a bit of time as well. Okay, so that's the report builder. And that can be leveraged against any of the data grids. So I'd also like to point out a few of the, um, I'll call them more canned reporting methods. So you can come down and pick from the display scenario different things here. Um, total cost of PMs by whatever. Uh, percentage of tasks completed on time by equipment and so on. And you'll get different values in here for that. Um, they're, they're slightly canned. But usually there's some filtering capability on, on them for the most part. Okay, so the other thing you can do finally is 
there are some options for just generating reports that don't show up in the data grid. So what we might want to try is something like this. Go to File, Print, and Percent of PMs Completed. So if you just want a quick report on something, we can come in here. In this case, I'll just pick Percent Completed by Work Area Location, which is a grouping of equipment items. But a common one would be by Technician or Equipment. And then you can determine what type of chart you want to use. I'll just go ahead with a column chart. Um, the bar charts are kind of nice to use with the Technician. Um, they'll give you a color scale showing uh, what percentage, so it makes it really quick to look at each chart. In fact, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So let's go with this one first. So in this case, we can go back, we can pick a date range, and I'm just going to capture everything. And we get our report. And so it's, this again is a bar chart. We've got our group header on this side, I'm going to go ahead and close that. And so there you go. Okay. And finally, let me go ahead and just do the uh, do a bar chart. So that'll be more of a horizontal type bar, and completed by technician. Yeah, let's see what we get. Okay. So on this one, what we're getting is kind of a more graphical view, in my opinion. Your green being, you know, good, your red not so good, and your yellow, yeah. So, anyways, so that is a couple of different ways you can report on the PMs. Just keep in mind, you can apply most of what was shown in this video to pretty much every screen in the program. Hope you found this useful.